Now we've taken a look at how to run applications and replicate and scale them with deployments. And we've taken a look at how services provide an endpoint to access cluster resources to other cluster applications. We've even extended that to look at using cloud providers' native load balancing services to route external clients to access services running in our Tectonic Kubernetes clusters. However, specifying a uh, metered load balancer at your cloud provider for every single one of what could be hundreds or even thousands of microservices could quickly get expensive and rather difficult to manage. Tectonic Kubernetes ingress resources allow a way to provide rules that describe how outside traffic is routed into the cluster. Now, Kubernetes ingress resources are not useful unless there is an ingress controller uh, backing them to actually handle those requests once they come in through the edge of the cluster network um, to this ingress controller. Tectonic includes a native ingress controller um, that we can build on top of to build routing rules for our own applications. We can see the Tectonic Ingress Controller's deployment running here in Tectonic Console. And if we take a look at the Ingress resource itself, we can see that according to these rules, the path for the root at our URL here, the actual Tectonic Console we're using, is actually routed through the Tectonic Ingress Controller by the Tectonic Ingress resource that we're taking a look at here. Now, we can build on top of that for our own applications. Um, as we've already looked at a few times, we have a deployment of the Nginx web server running uh, and replicated in three copies, and we're looking at it here. Um, what we're going to do is quickly add a service on top of that to make an endpoint to access the Nginx uh, application. Um, we can do that quite easily, again, by changing the metadata in the manifest for the service we want to create. Um, in this case, we want to uh, make sure we give it a name distinguished uh, by Nginx so that we can find it again in our label queries. Um, and we want to make sure we're pointing it at the port 80 that the Nginx pods inside the Nginx deployment are actually listening on uh, for inbound connections. Now when we create this, um, as we've talked about in previous episodes, we get the default uh, service configuration with a cluster IP that's routable only within the cluster and can only be found by other applications and clients running in that cluster. And we don't want to use a load balancer as we looked at in our previous uh, episode. What we want to do instead is create an ingress rule, um, a set of ingress rules that will route traffic intended for our Nginx service through the Tectonic Ingress controller based on those rules and deliver it to, uh, to our Nginx deployment so that we can answer those web requests. So taking a look again at our list of uh, ingress resources here in Tectonic Console, let's create a new one. We actually want to replace this with the next necessary annotations. This one is actually key. We're declaring which ingress controller will be responsible for handling um, requests routed through this ingress resource. In this case, again, we're building on top of the included tectonic ingress controller, so we name it here in our annotations. Um, obviously, we're hosted uh, off of the same URL that tectonic console can be found at, um, and we can just layer on top of that name resolution at a path um, that will deliver us to our Nginx service and the Nginx deployment underlying it. Here we've given that a clear name at a path slash Nginx via ingress so that it's easy for us to find and recall what it is in the future. So let's go ahead and create that ingress. Um, and we can see that we should now have a path uh, at our cluster URL that connects us to our Nginx service. So we just add our URL in. And again, we see the Nginx default index page. So Ingress provides the last mile, you might think of it, to connect services through the edge of the cluster network without requiring, an or without requiring a metered load balancer from your cloud provider uh, or direct programming of your on-premises load balancers for each microservice that you want to run in your Kubernetes cluster. Thank you.